so as the first thing I would like to check if it's fine if I talk like this or if I need a mic. Perfect. Yeah? Okay, nice. So, uh, I'm Julien Bruno. I'm a Belgian artist uh, based in Brussels. And um, my work is busy with intersections between movement, drawing and language, which leads me to uh, various formats. bit noisy so maybe we wait. Hello. So yeah I was saying that uh, my my work <coughs> takes form in different uh, formats, uh, dance pieces, performances um, installation or drawings for exhibitions, online publication, it will be the, the basis of my lecture today, also um, experimental discursive event. And uh, yeah, as I said, my proposition for today is to take you for a walk into a digital environment. I'm talking about Strata, which is an uh, online publication that was created in May 2014. And um, I, I thought of presenting this uh, today in this context because um, for me Strata is at once an artwork and uh, an example of artistic research, a concrete example of artistic research, um, in the sense that the, the, the first gesture of Strata is um, self-reflective. It was the occasion for me to come back on my own work, on my methods and uh, tra my trajectory and also situating it in a broader cultural context see where it um, intersects with thinkers, other artists, uh, other periods of art history and so on. So in that sense it's artistic research but, um, but it also uh, takes um, shape into an, an artwork in the sense that all this material, all this reflection, documentation and processing is composed through uh, with artistic uh, strategies I use also in the studio when I'm working with dancers or that I use when I'm in front of a, of a paper and I develop a drawing and, um, and, and it results uh, from that it results um, um, this publication that also give a specific peculiar invitation to the visitor. You will see it later, but I say that in the sense that it's not uh, merely informative, it's more uh, an invitation for an experience of yeah, wandering in an environment. Before to go to, to Strata, I would like to introduce the context Strata is part of. Strata was developed as I was invited by Sarma to, to make a publication for Oral Site. This is the homepage of Oral Site. Sarma is a Belgian based uh, organization that defines itself as a laboratory for discursive practices and expanded publications. They are mostly active in the field of performance but with a big interest also uh, towards the, where performance meets other kind of artistic or discursive practices. Among the projects they have developed uh, oral site, which has the, the particularity of uh, being at once a website hosting uh, publication but also um, being a software that allows artists to compose themselves their own publication. It has been developed with Constant, which are um, searches in open source softwares. So it's a, it's a created environment 
different kind of people are invited to develop a project with them. He was the first, what's the score, was the first publication on, on notation and scores in dance. Then we had walk talk documents, which is a kind of archive of all, all of the walk talk performances that have been developed. It's a format created by Philip Gemacher, Austrian uh, choreographer, that invites a choreographer to do and talk about the practices on stage. More than one tie is a publication about uh, the notion, around the notion of affinities, as as expressed in the in the work and relationship of a group of uh, Berlin-based artists, Strata and Dancer as Agent Collection, which is an extension to a symposium that happened in Stockholm in 2014. And the latest uh, issues were Clangwich, a publication on sound poetry, uh, sound poetry of a collective from Australia, Half Half. And this is a series that will be recurrent, volume SP, with, uh, which is also around sound poetry. Just to give you a bit an idea of where that thing is um, embedded. So one, one more word is to say that um, I, want to, uh, I want to explain you my choices about Strata, I won't try to give you an overview of what it is. My invitation is more for an immersion that I bring you with me in this environment which is quite large, it takes quite some time to go through it and we'll explore only some zones of it. Right. Okay.
You see here a um, sculpture of Medusa by Italian artist Bernini from the 17th century. As you know, Medusa is one of three. She has two sisters. She is known for her hair made of snakes and for turning into stone people that cross her gaze. I'm interested in, in Medusa here um, as a figure that deals with the formless and with the multiple, or the multiplicity. Um, on this culture, we see a, a kind of tension in our attention between looking into the face of Medusa and looking towards these many heads and many bodies swarming on her head. The tension um, between the sight and the sign of identity that the face is and a cloudy, buzzing activity on top of a head that challenges the oneness of identity. Uh, about uh, one century before, Cellini made another sculpture of the same uh, figure, but this time defeated by Perseus. that uh, who beheaded her. What I find interesting with this um, sculpture and specifically this, this detail is that for me it suggests a continuity between the interiority of the Medusa and this swarm of, of snakes she has on her head, like this viscera, organic tubes and tissues hanging from the cut throat look indeed very much alike the snakes moving on her head it's even more striking here with this you know, from the floor this excess this excess of um, the inner organic viscera reaching out With that in mind, I would propose a, a reading of the myth that says that the people turn into stones by the gaze of Medusa are, are petrified not by the proper power of Medusa that would uh, like cast a spell on them and turn them into stone, but rather by, I would rather say that through the eyes of Medusa, they see inside this uh, inner swarming multiplicity that we see also um, around her head. And that um, facing this, um, this stream of multiple potentialities who are not uh, contained by an identity, they, they choose for identity so much that they become compact, they coincide with themselves so much that they, they are still petrified. So, in the myth, this paper would represent a certain tendency of holding back, of moving away from a, a too abundant amount of uh, potentialities until 
you choose for the total identity with ourselves and, and you, there is no more movement possible. Perseus managed to, to kill Medusa thanks to a gift by the gods that gave him a shield that was so polished that it was uh, shining as a mirror. So he could use it to move towards Medusa and kill her without having um, to be afraid of crossing her gaze because it was always mediated by the mirror. That's what the myth says. Um, in the line I'm proposing, then the mirror takes somehow a more symbolic uh, function in this question of, of um, identity and multiplicity where on the one hand mirror could be used by Brazil's to strengthen his identity by looking at himself but also he could use it to look into himself so I would suggest that Perseus represent a discipline, a practice, a training in looking into oneself uh, discovering that inner multiplicity formless multiplicity that is here uh, represented by the organs and viscera of the, of the medusa <clears throat> But on the contrary, from Medusa, he would not let this inner multiplicity grow and overwhelm himself and so somehow um, wear it as a, as a celebration or as a halo of, um, of multiplicity. Here on this, on this picture, I, I find interesting that the hair of Perseus are not very far from the snakes of the, of the Medusa. But he has this, this helmet on top of it that contains the multiplicity. And we could add that also like this, then we could read tension between the, the snakes, we are creatures of the ground, sliding on the floor in the dust, in, Whereas the helmet that capture and contain the snakes uh, for Perseus are ornamented with wings that suggest a higher view that, view that can uh, encompass the whole situation from a distance. Dancing for me. It's really, really much about looking into Medusa's eyes. When I start to dance. I have set myself task to dance. And that, and that even before I start to move my attention, impregnates my body with this decision.
There is a kind of suspension of the usual way you assign a project to the body. And there is a, a sprouting of potentialities, a overwhelming multiplicity of sensations and impulses and desires. Every given moment, there is a double work. There is a work of identifying who I am. And identifying where I'm going to. Like two coordinates my trajectory. But there is also this second layer that is attentive to a certain porosity, attentive to the gaps that run through this trajectory from point A, where I am now, to point B, where I am tending towards. The gap from which an excess of potentialities could be felt Work with. So I need. with a negotiation with a swarm of snakes, everyone heading towards a different direction. So, anything would be looking into But it could also could also be said that it's about selectively embodying certain ghosts that Every moment, every movement, sorry, involves a ghost, a tribe of ghosts, potentialities that are hunting the present moment. Tribe of ghosts with in solidarity between them. So you would feel the influence of the whole shrine even through you and the body of some of them.
Mm -hmm. So you've seen this, this, these are called portrait, as it stands for an attempt to make a portrait of a ghost by taking away the veil is hidden behind. But of course you can't see a ghost, so what, what you are left with are formless traces on the paper. <clears throat> um, artistic research for me proceeds very much from the same logic of uh, going inside what has been formed, what you can identify, and and see what's what what in there is still um, stayed latent, um, with the assumption that every every form, every identity, is trading with um, an excess of its own potentialities. So at every given moment, in the art process, you, you have to make decisions to compose, create forms, propose these forms. And artistic research for me is very much about going back to that and diving inside, looking into, into the eyes of the Medusa and see see this potentiality and, and to cultivate this to, to grow, to reach out, to overwhelm the existing form in a, in a multiple tending towards and see where it invites me to branch this form, this identity to. And uh, this, this metaphor suggests also that um, I have to look at my own work as a figure, to look into its eyes, I have to see it as a figure, which, which, means, to, which means it's, um, it has an autonomy from me, it has, uh, it has an identity that uh, is distinct from mine, and for, yeah, for me that's really one um, function of artistic research, it's also like to to somehow depossess yourself from your own work and see your own work as a distinct autonomous entity. Um, I'm a bit confused because Paolo shows me that I should close that soon, where I think... Um, how comes, Paolo? It's 10 to 1. So, can you, can you tell me? I'm surprised that it's almost over because I see that it's 10 to 1. We started late. Excuse me? Yeah. Yeah, okay. Let's do that. Yeah. One of the things you said is that uh, you mentioned making a decision at some point about what your existing home is going to be and what your, where you're going and all mm -hmm. this, what your status is. But um, isn't it more the case that you don't make any decisions at all? In the sense, you're not sort of intentionally making a decision. It's more like, because for me, the most interesting thing Yeah. 
yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, it's... Um, okay, then if, if I go there, I think we definitely open the, the, the floor for questions, um, which is fine. <laughs> um, yeah, for me, it's... Um, For me, it's a negotiation. I, I wouldn't. I wouldn't say that there is no decision at all. Uh, also, because as a, as an artist, I'm, I make proposition to, to to a public, to community of people, and as such, I I have to engage my responsibility in what I'm offering. So, even through, I may not always take decisions on the first place, but. Uh, at certain point of the process, I do have to acknowledge that okay, I, this proposition will will have my signature, signature. It will have my name. So, therefore, I think I have to to affirm a decision somewhere to be accountable as a as a person that makes a proposition. But um, but certainly, I'm I'm very interested by uh, exploring uh, this this. Uh, these zones where you don't know if you are the one making the decision or not. But I would say also that for me, um, it's um, it doesn't come out of goodwill, you know. Yeah, goodwill, like because I think I'm, I'm existing in a, we are existing in a society that expects from us to. To have an identity, to make decisions, uh, to be responsible, to to uh, rule our own lives, and so on. So, uh, to access to these moments where you invite potentiality to manifest itself, to actualize through you, it it doesn't come out of free, of goodwill. It's not just a disposition or an intention that you could have vaguely and, and expect that this will happen and disrupt your habits of behaving as a formed individual. Uh, so I think also I have to take decisions to set up the uh, context or situation where this, that, well, where this could occur. And it's, you mentioned possession, which is... Uh, which show a situation of highly regulated uh, dispositive, highly regulated technologies for this moment uh, to happen, where indeed people suddenly are moved by something else, by a potentiality that's larger than themselves and that they don't control. But if you go into... into um, when he's studying and witnessing possession rituals, it's it's very more complex than than binary. Is there intention or is there no intention? Because the the, the spirit that manifests itself is always manifests itself in a certain way. It's some some he, he has also um, prescribed behaviors, for instance, that encode this. This energy, this potentiality into uh, into the society is is talking to or is uh, invited by. Well, I don't use that term, it's in self, um, but yeah, w what I do like about it is, uh, as you see, the aesthetic of this page, which is uh, a recurrent uh, aesthetic of mine, is that of a collage of juxtaposed elements, where there is an emphasis on the, on the, the fact that these elements are distinct. 
And uh, so for me this resonance, what it suggests is this effect, uh, different uh, documents or parts or fragments, how these, uh, these fragments can influence each other without being in an obvious, uh, articulated, aligned relationship. Yeah. Which obviously reminds me of the Guilty Jobs, the Ghost Dance, and the Friends Dance recording, which has to do more with the tracing of the movements. Um, and here you can present the tracing of the movements of your dance instead of the indexes, the trace, right? The burning of the ghost. So, how do you then think about your dance as trace? Where does trace take place? Or where does this index take place? Well, I think trace takes place in me and in you, in the sense that um, I'm somehow when I when I when I dance, I have a sense of where I inscribe certain trajectory, certain texture, certain energy, and that I may revisit that later on, or that even if I don't revisit it. it gains the weight by having been uh, manifested here rather than there, that long rather than that long intuition and so on. Um, so when it's, it's, a, it's a kind of thing I take with me from drawing, which is my original training, where you could draw a trace here, and then another here, and then come back here. And when I dance, I have that very much with me, that what I do here, is something, and it has it has a life different than, of course, if, I, if it's with ink on paper, but somehow it has an existence there. So there is for me a trace in the space in my own reading of the moment, and, and, and uh, but the moment's never just a moment. It's, it's trace. It's something else too. Mm -hmm. yeah. What do you mean by that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so that's that's something I take with me. But of course, yourself as a spectator, you you notice things that uh, that leave an imprint. And you sometimes you don't notice that they have an imprint. An imprint very much the way you read what uh, what happens. strategy I developed in, in a recent piece and that I was um, planning to apply today uh, but yeah for time reason it doesn't happen but um, so I presented this first dance you know where I'm bent this which uh, which is a sex dance and um, and I was about to repeat it later on and um, after all this talk, uh, what I would expect from experience to happen is that I would go with a very different um, attitude 
being charged by the affect of processing these thoughts and presenting them to you. A new self, you would read it very differently by. You, you recognize that you've seen it, so somehow the, the question of identity is, is somehow so you recognize what I'm doing. You say, ah, that's the same thing. And uh, you said after having gone through, through these thoughts I've posed, then you, you, you read it differently and you, you, you tend to associate um, thoughts, images you thought about in the talk to, to the body. And so the, the body uh, becomes a screen for projection and holds with it a um, whole range of sometimes images and clear notions, but also yeah, another affective state. So, um, repetition, for me, it's an interesting operation, and uh, it's going full on, on that level. So, uh, to, to, to bring it back to, uh, to a piece, a complete piece I've made recently, which is called Some Prospects of Some of Our Improbable Bodies. It works in the same way, Visitor, the spectators see a set of pretenses, and after that, the performer brings on the table drawings, abstract drawings with bits of text, and she does an exegesis of the drawings. And it's, it's quite long, it's about 15 minutes long, where she interprets this, these drawings, and there's a whole world of um, related images and concepts that come from this reading. And then she does the same dance, allowing this world to uh, imbue the dance. And the spectator feel invited, I mean, it's not even a decision, like, why our um, practice of sense-making, that is constantly running, you start to associate. And so the, the dancer is no more there as, as, as a subject, as a person, but she's really activating that word that has been generated before through, through words uh, by the interpretation of the drawing.